Good morning again. Moving uh, right along to our next presenter. Most of you know Jan Zosman and have heard him speak in the past. He's going to be talking uh, much more about simplifying your, your graph design and some of those uh, techniques and tips. So uh, take it away, Jans. Okay. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is my second time that I'm attending this conference. It was the last conference I did live last year. And it was a really enjoyable one. So um, let's see how it goes uh, this year. Anyway, so I'm going to talk today about entity event knowledge graphs for data-centric organizations. And the key message it actually is, so we, we help customers build knowledge graphs, uh, or we build knowledge graphs for customers. And what we've seen is, okay, so people want to build a knowledge graph. And basically what they do is they copy the complexity of their relational database silos into the knowledge graph. And that is usually a recipe for failure. So then we came up with a way the last several years to actually handle this complexity by having what we call an entity event model. And some of the people in the audience might have heard about that. Um, and once you adhere to this particular entity event model, then I make the crazy claim that um, it gets at least two orders of magnitude easier to model and import your data, to understand your data, to do queries and feature extraction for machine learning, and retrieve a 360 view of your core entity in just a few milliseconds. So, and then most importantly, most of the time when people start building knowledge graphs, they quickly realize they're going to get into the tens or maybe even hundreds of billions of, of uh, knowledge graphs, or knowledge, uh, triples in the knowledge graph. And it just won't work in the single repository. So you need some mechanism. In our case, that is federation and sharding in a distributed graph database to actually make that happen. So we got on this path. Um, of entity event modeling, I would say about uh, 10 years ago, uh, when we were working with a telecom integration company called MDOX. Uh, and they were doing, a, they were creating a 360 view of customers in CRM for telecom. Okay, so we, we, I'll talk about it in a second. Then about five years ago, <clears throat> we started working together with the Einstein Medical College and Montefiore Hospital. And we actually could use the same model that we used for uh, uh, MDOCs. <clears throat> actually, the, the, fellow, the, the, the main researcher in Einstein come up himself with that model, but it was just wonderful that we had the same idea. And that got us also going into building distributed telegraph. And then for the last three, four years, we've been working with the big call center in Atlanta, where we built a knowledge graph for a call center, and we considered that kind of a corporate brain. I'm gonna to talk to you today about what we do there. Then we have some other projects, but I only have 30 minutes today. So what have these cl clients in common? Well, they all dream of a, a data-centric organization, and they probably dreamt about it even before Dave came up with the term, but they now all agree that that is actually a very good description. So it always the dream, can I have one data infrastructure that will feed all my applications? Yeah. Um, then the other thing that my clients have in common is they realize that actually they care mostly about not the current state, but what happened. Yeah. And they look at the data and all the silos and they realize that it's actually almost all event data. And so if you wanna build a knowledge graph, then you have to take that into consideration and so that's why usually you'll find one entity that you really care about, and then you couch all the event data in your databases and attach it to the core entities. And that's just the entity event model. And then of course, on top of that, literally every client has natural language processing and machine learning as an integral part about the whole thing. So now the first, <clears throat> so a little bit of history. So the first time we got into this was about 10 years ago when we were working with MDOCs. And the situation situation there was that if you had only one phone call to a telephone call center, because you as a customer have a problem with your phone, then an agent on average had to open up 
15 different screens that talked to about nine different databases. Yeah. So it was a lot of work and only 60% of these calls resulted in success, even if the call lasted on average 15 minutes. So both the agent were unhappy and the customers were unhappy. And on average, the cost was about $75 per call. But it was way, way, way too high. So what if you could build a 360 customer view around a phone, a, a phone account yeah, that would anticipate the reason for the customer interaction? Yeah. So say I have a very high bill, $100 more than normal. And if I call the call center, the first response system could already say, oh, Mr. Asman, uh, your phone bill is $100 higher. That was because you visited Japan and you don't have an international plan. Can we add an international plan for $5 and we'll waive the $100, yeah? And then no interaction with the call center, yeah? And then you want to automate the access to the required information for the agent. So they wanted something that put all the information together so that the, 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 the uh, agent only had to look at one screen and the screen already had the things that probably were wrong with, with the customer when he was calling in. And then of course you help the agent in real time. So that's it. That was the system uh, that they wanted to build. Now I had been um, writing and talking about events for the last 10 years. And this is a, probably more than that. This is, um, an app, this is a, a paper that I presented at Debs in, oh, it's in 2008, yeah, it's called Unification of Geospatial Reasoning, Temporal Logic, and Social Network Analysis in the Event-Based System. Um, I myself come from a telecom background, and so I was always interested in events. And, um, and so I got to know the people at MDOX. And these MDOX people were absolute Oracle experts, yeah, and very proud of it. But they realized that, one, that when they wanted to do that 360 view, then a relational database, that was just a no-no. And also, when they started, they quickly realized that just copying the complexity of the relational database to a graph didn't reduce the complexity at all. Yeah, one of the things that Dave also also always talks about. And then the crucial insight for them that 90% of all our data is event data. So let's cast the data to events and bodies as triples in a graph, where the event is a very simple object. It's a thingy with the type, always a start time, sometimes an end time sometimes a location and a few additional key value pairs. Yeah, and then we, what we did, we created a whole architecture around it where you had all the silos that would send data to the front event collector. At the time, we already would do that in, in JSON. It would go into a thing in the decision engine. Every time when a new event came in, we would apply business rules in memory. Or actually, what we would do is we got an event that for a particular person, we will get all the triples about that person into memory. Then we would apply the rules to see if anything happened at the state of the current customer and then write the results back into the, da in, in, into the database. Yeah. And so that was the core uh, uh, system. And so what, what we then had is we had all these events. Yeah. And probably all these events came from different databases. Interactions, an order for a new phone, a bill, a payment, and especially a non-payment, collections, charge dispute, disputes, anyway, even way more events than you see here. And then on top of that, we would learn about the customer in this knowledge graph about, for example, that this person, John Smith, had a good mood and it was actually increasing and there's all kinds of information about this plan, et cetera. Anyway, that was roughly the first time that we got into this, this idea of entity event modeling in a graph, yeah? So then, as I said before, six years ago, we got in talking to and working together with the, multi, uh, with the hospital chain in the Bronx called Montefiore. I've talked about this before. Some, some people in the audience have he heard the story uh, probably too many times. Um, but so we have there a knowledge graph with about 2 million patients, uh, and 10 years, by now 12 years worth of data. Yeah. And what we found there was this, this, uh, this partner of mine, Parsa Mihaji, that also had this big, big dream that he didn't want to build a new application for every application that the hospital needed. He just wanted to have one data infrastructure, one graph um, 
to feed every type of inf uh, every type of application. So we started in 2017 with a, a machine learning model that would predict when people might get into respiratory failure. And kind of the ironic thing is that it's now the top model in 2021 with COVID, except the model needed to change completely, but still the same underlying data model. After that, we created a model for sepsis. Uh, they created a model for spinal cord compression. But the point is, if you look at all these different types of applications, they're always different, but they always use the same underlying entity event knowledge graph. Yeah, And we've been talking about this approach of entity event modeling. And by the way, don't worry, I'll go into the details of that model a little bit later yeah, in great detail. Um, so at the top level, you know, if, if you look at as a data fabric, what we built at the hospital, then at the top level, um, you want to have this one data centric platform for any kind of analytics. But any company, of course, always starts with a, a fragmented solution, silos. I mean, uh, we all work with that. Then richer companies can afford an enterprise data warehouse. And so the big step that my partner and, and I made when we were working on this is this radical simplification by using the entity event models where you go from thousands and thousands of tables and, and 20,000 different columns into simple events. We had an ontology of just 350 events, could be a check-in, check-out, a test, a diagnosis, a procedure, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but, all, but always this simple, simple event. Yeah, so instead of rows and columns, just little objects, events attached to the core entity, which was the patient. And <clears throat> then we attached it a, a unified terminology system that in itself is 500, million triples <clears throat> we have an etl system to make it easy to go from these silos to this this simple model we add the data about weather and about many other things that are just in the linked open data cloud including PubMed. all of that goes into semantic graph and then finally we have on top of that a declarative semantic description of all the kinds of features that you might want in your machine learning models so that you don't need to know sparkle to actually do data science but you can just use in Python, you make lists, lists of, 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 well, dictionary objects that describe what you want, and the system will automatically create feature factors for you. Anyway, that was roughly the um, the idea. And um, so now let's talk about the entity event model in a little bit more detail. So as you might understand, we have entities, the patient, we have events, things that happen to a patient, and because we hang the entity, the, the events and the sub events from the core entity, the patient, you can represent a patient as a hierarchical tree. And we make sure that the fourth element of every triple for that patient is the patient identifiers. So because of the semantic web and, and semantic graph databases, yeah, these trees are actually both logically and physically grouped into a, a chunk of information. So that is the core part of this entity event model. And then, of course, all the symbols in this tree are basically grounded in the ontology and the taxonomy for uh, the medical, uh, well, for the medical context. And so here is the model that we have. We have an entity of type person that has an event of the outpatient encounter that happened at this particular time. And then this outpatient encounter had a sub-event of a type patient diagnosis which is allergy to peanuts. And then, so this is an ICD-9 or ICD-10 code. And this is linked then to an object that's linked to 180 different taxonomies that are integrated. So in this case, it's SNOMED with allergy to peanuts, which has a broader allergy to legumes, which is a higher abstraction la layer, it's food allergy, et cetera, et cetera. So this shape is always the same, whether you get a bill or a claim to, um, to the insurance company or whether you uh, have a vital sign it's always entity event possibly a sub event with a value with, with, the, with the, the type and the value and then getting into the taxonomy part right so now this is another way to represent it a little bit more structural so we have a core entity which is the patient then we have the event graph yeah always a patient has an encounter with some uh, sub events like their diagnostics and procedures and medications. 
which then end into a taxonomy, this, this half billion triples that are just a knowledge base about whatever else we know in, in medicine. Now, the advantage of this model, it's become incredibly easy to understand it, to understand the model, yeah? Um, most of you guys are familiar with relational databases, but if I took you to the enterprise data warehouse at Montefiore, I, I wouldn't be able to explain the data to you in less than weeks. But I can take you to my model in Allegro Graph, yeah, and I can explain, explain all the data in less than two hours, and you would be able to do queries over it. Yeah, so we use our graphical query editor to just draw a query on the screen. Um, and then you just push a button, it creates a sparkle. So in this case, sorry, I forgot to tell. So say you have a query where you want to say, give me all the patients that have gallbladder calculus, right? After the year 2010. Well, if I would have to write this query in SQL, this would be part one of three in SQL, and you probably don't write this in five minutes, maybe more like five days, right? In our system graph, I can draw this query in less than five minutes. I push a button, I get this sparkle, and I get the answer in a few seconds, right? So it becomes really a lot easier to um, do complex queries. It's also now very easy to get all the triples for a patient. I can just say, hey, give me all the triples where the fourth element is this patient identifier. I got all these triples back. But developers don't really like it to get, uh, say, uh, 100,000 triples back because now they have in Python or JavaScript or whatever else, they have to rebuild the graph in their local memory. So now we can just also say, in, uh, for example, in Python or JavaScript, hey, give me all the data about a patient and in Python, I would just get a dictionary object back with completely formatted data, yeah? So in less than a second, I can get everything about a particular patient, yeah, with just a simple call. Try that in your enterprise data warehouse, right? Then the benefit of this approach is that you need only a one-time map mapping. Um, once it, the data is in the entity event knowledge graph, you don't have to do anything else. And most importantly, because people always say, well, uh, it's going to take so much time to take all the data and put it in there. But actually, you only need to put the events that you need for your application in the, in the knowledge graph. And if later you decide to do another application too, you only add events that you need. You never have to change the old events or the structure of the data because it's also always very simple, an entity and a set of events. So that's it. So no big bang approach. You can just very simply start uh, uh, adding events to this knowledge graph. And then one more, and there's, there's a lot more things I could say about this, but one more is it's very important in a hospital, but also in banks, we found in other places that you always know where your data came from. So we provide provenance at every level. So even in this entity event model, because the way we structure the data, we always, always, always know from what database and tape, uh, table and, and, and column a particular data element came, what the date was that we got it in there, and what the methods were that we used to convert the data. Um, so that about the, um, the medical use case. Then um, the third one is a knowledge graph that we're building right now. It's already in production, um, where we create a corporate memory. For, so this is for a big call center, yeah? And so call centers, this is a call center with 1,500 people. They call literally tens of thousands of companies in, in, a, in a month, yeah? But the problem was they never remembered that they had come, called this company before and they didn't know what the technology stack was, what people were making the decision makers and uh, at least a hundred other things that you really would like. And so now we're using the knowledge graph to actually build up that corporate memory. But more importantly, we also, well, just as importantly, we use a lot of speech technology and natural language uh, processing to analyze and understand the spoken conversation between BDRs, the business development representatives, and the context of the companies you're selling to and learn from that. And then when the, we're also in the middle of making these BDRs smarter by providing real-time decision support, yeah? So that if, say, an, an, a customer that you're talking to talks about a competitive product, then instantly on the screen, you will get a battle card that will tell you how to fight against what your competitor is saying about, the, well, what the customer thinks the competitor is saying about their product. Um, and so much more to talk about. So 
this is a company in Atlanta, 1,500 people. Um, all of them, all the agents have college degrees. They do a lot of preparation before they do a call. It's not simple scripting. And so, um, again, for them, it's really important. It's a very thin margin business uh, a call center. So it's really important that you automate as much as possible and that you make the agent as smart as possible. And so here's the knowledge graph that we built for them. It's an entity event tree. So you remember the, the medical model. Well, this is the entity event tree for an intelligent call center. So, and we chose as a, I jokingly say, our patient in this application are the companies that you're selling to. So just for fun, this is all fake data. CVS Oakland and Acme Bread, yeah? And then, so companies have contact persons, yeah? But contact persons work for a company from a start time to an end time. Even that is something that's important because when you talk to a contact person, he might've worked for another company where you already knew him, yeah? And you can put the right salesperson on that so they already know each other. Anyway, so the first event is that contact persons work for a certain amount of time for the, the, the customer. And then here we have, uh, the, the, the clients that the N3, the call center is working for, for example, Rocket Cloud Services or uh, Digital Ocean, yeah? And um, these cl big clients yeah, that pay N3 to do the calls for them do campaigns, yeah? A period of six weeks where you try to sell a particular type of technology. And so now you might have BDRs actually working within a campaign, but again, it's an event that you work for the pay for a campaign because you have a start time that you work for the campaign and the end time. And sometimes you work for multiple campaigns. And then here is all the, the magic where people talk to their contact person. Yeah, so again, it's roughly the same as healthcare. You have a core entity, you have the events, and then you have uh, the, the big knowledge base, which is campaign information, client information, information about your BDRs, the taxonomy for products, et cetera, et cetera. And in the middle, up to a few years ago, there was the big mystery, which is, so this is a knowledge graph, it's getting bigger and bigger, but actually it's only 10%, the structured information is only 10% of this whole knowledge graph, because the real part is what's happening in these conversations, right? And so we're using, as I said, speech technology and uh, um, natural language processing. So for every voice call or for every note that people make after a call, we actually listen to it, we get the transcript, yeah? So I talked to Bob Johnson, he's a VP of engineering, and he was a subdomain from a subdomain division. Then we do NLP on the transcript and we find in our taxonomy that they mentioned a VP of engineering, which is part of a contact person, yeah? Or we find products in the, in the phrases, or we find the sales terms like, oh, this person is a decision maker, now he's talking about budget, et cetera, et cetera. So, and this is actually 10 times more data than the structure. And this is very important if you want to do analytics. But again, I'm talking about the event model today. So let's, let's go too deep. So finally, we have this whole um, event model. And as I said before, there's actually more customers trying it out right now. The biggest example or the biggest advantage, or one of the most biggest, uh, the biggest advantages is that you Get scale, you can do scalability because you can use this model to shards. Yeah, it's impossible to have one repository with a uh, hundred billion million triples, a hundred billion triples. <laughs> you you need sharding, and so we came up with an approach, yeah, that we call Fed Shard, a, a, a contraction of federation and sharding, where the entity event tree is going to shards with entity D as a shard key, and then the shards get federated with non-shardable knowledge bases. So not all data can be sharded, only the, the entities and the events can be sharded, but the knowledge bases are way too um, heavily connected graphs and they are non-shardable. So in healthcare, it's the taxonomies and the medical publications and statistical knowledge. In telecom, it's the telephone plans, taxonomies, the connection graph between customers and in uh, and three, it's the knowledge about the clients, right? So this, please keep this in mind. There is the part that you can shard and there's a part that you cannot shard. And so the entity event model is really perfect for sharding. So this is a picture where we have say one machine in the cluster. Each shard might have 
100,000 customers or 30,000 patients. Yeah. Here is a number of knowledge bases that are, that are the unsharded. So the green boxes are the unshardable uh, knowledge bases. Here is the sharded data with the entity events. And then when we do a Sparkle query from this place, we actually send, when you do a Sparkle query, and I'm in my vendor talk, I'm going to give a small example of that. Um, when you do a Sparkle query, actually the Sparkle will go to literally every shard, yeah, where, um, but this shard is not just a shard, this shard is also federated with each of the knowledge bases. A year ago, I gave a talk about how we do federation in the Lego graph, but um, that's, that's too complicated for now. And actually this picture is wrong because it should be a little orange box for each of these blue things here. But I hope you understand Sparkle query goes to each federation, which is a shard and the knowledge basis, and then we get a result back. And then here we combine it again. And this allows us to go as many triples as you ever might want. Okay, so in the summary, we make it easy to understand very, very complex data with this entity event model, make it easy to do queries and feature extraction, and make it very easy to get the 360 view of your entities. And if you want to try it out, we're happy, happy to help you with your first POC to create an entity event model and then run it in the, the distributed Lego graph. All right, that was actually my talk. Thank you.